This video is going to be the first in a new series that I'm going to call Show Me the Data. We've had a few requests in this class to see more data um, and the context of how density functions kind of work in the world of statistics. So this series, Show Me the Data, uh, is going to be our attempt to highlight where data comes into play in the world of statistics. Since this is the first part in this series, I'll start with the goal of statistics. We'll repeat it later on in the course as we get um, a more refined understanding of stats. And then we'll talk about estimating expectations. Um, we should really say with data. And then we'll look at an example in R. So the goal of statistics looks like this. There's this big world out there that has many different things happening in it. Suppose you, as an undergraduate student, are interested in going to graduate school. And so you ask, let's say, uh, you want to know answers to questions like, What's the probability that I get into four or five out of my top five graduate school choices? We can think of that question as a binomial distribution with k equal to five and some unknown probability p. Now, the idea goes like this. If you're interested in a probability, you're in the world of statistics, and you're coming out of Chico State, wondering what's the probability you're going to get into four or five of your top five graduate school choices. Well, that's a random outcome. Some of uh, your colleagues will get into four or five of their top uh, five graduate school choices, and some of them won't. So what we're trying to do then is deal with the density function or the distribution of a binomial where you're interested in five trials, that is five separate applications to graduate schools, and you want to know some probability statement around those, given that each application has some probability p of succeeding. So the world of statistics operates like this. Collect some data. Now, since you're going around asking a bunch of your fellow Chico State students how many of the, their top five graduate schools they've gotten into, then you're going to get a bunch of binomial data that might look like this, x1 through xn. The goal of statistics, then, is to estimate probabilities or other expectations that might look like this. What's the probability that you get into four or five of your graduate school, uh, of your top five graduate school choices? So we will use the data to estimate um, expectations. that look like this, of various functions, g, with respect to a density function. And so in this case, we are asking for an expectation of the indicator function defined on the set consisting of the elements 4 and 5. That's what a probability is. And then, so our function g is the indicator function on the set 4 and 5. And then this is with respect to the density function for the binomial distribution, since we are here in a scenario where the binomial distribution is appropriately describing um, whether or not we get into 
any of our top five graduate school choices. So really, we are going to then be focusing on estimating expectations. So we'll say with data x1 through xn from, and let's generalize a little bit, from some distribution f. In our previous example, it was binomial uh, with k equal to 5 and some unknown probability that each application to a graduate school gets accepted. We want to estimate expectations that look like this. And so far, we've focused on arbitrary functions g that are indicator functions, suggesting we want to estimate probabilities. OK, so the most common way to estimate expectations is with the mean. So the mean of a vector x is the sum of all the elements in x. And then you divide by however many elements there are. In R, we would write mean of the vector x, just like that. And it would add up all the elements in x and divide by however many there are. But if we are interested in a particular function g, then really we might do some calculation like this. We have a sum of g of each of the x's from n equals 1 to n, and divided by however many there are. In R, we would write this out as mean, the function g of x. And in math, we know that this converges to, as our sample size increases, the expectation of that function g. Now, this is going to be the brunt of this class. I know we haven't quite gotten to that yet, but this is going to come up for us again time and time over and over. We're going to see that the mean of some function of some data is estimating an expectation of that function. So let's jump into R and see if we can take this scenario and apply it to the example we just had about you and your colleagues applying to five graduate schools. So the idea goes like this. Here is a vector of a bunch of data. This is the data you might have collected from this binomial distribution, where each element consists of the number of schools from the top five schools you applied to that you got accepted into. So here, this first person, whoever they might have, might randomly be, got accepted into four of their five uh, graduate school choices. The next, uh, it looks like next six or so people, seven or so people, got accepted into three of their top five graduate school choices. This lucky dog here got accepted into five out of five of their top five graduate school choices here, three. And this unlucky person, oh, look, here's one even more unlucky. It looks to be the only person in our data set that got accepted into only one of their top five graduate school choices. So what we're interested in then is how we can use this data to estimate the probability that you got accepted into four or five of your top five graduate school choices. The higher this probability, the more likely it is for you personally to get accepted into four or five of your top five graduate school choices. So we would say we're going to use the function mean. And the function we're going to apply to this is the function x greater than or equal to 4. 
Now, before I actually run that code, let's just look. Since this is the equivalent of an indicator function defined on the set of four and five, look, we get out of it only trues and falses. Any time the observation is in the set four or five, we return a true. And any time it's not, we return a false. This is what the indicator function for, uh, defined on the set four or five looks like for these specific data. Here, true corresponds to this five. So indeed, if we take our data x and we calculate the mean of the indicator function where it returns a one true, if your observation is in the set consisting of the integers four or five, and we calculate the mean of that, then we'll estimate based on the data alone, there is a 70% chance, basically 70%, that you will get accepted into four or five of your top five graduate school choices. Now, I generated these data. So this example is completely made up. Here is what I chose to make up the example. The point about the convergence of the calculation done on the data set relative to the actual expectation goes like this. If you just add some zeros somewhere here to make your uh, sample size much, much bigger, and you repeat the calculation, this number is almost guaranteed to be closer to the true probability because the sample size is so much bigger. Now, at this point in the class, we know how to calculate this true probability as let's add up the binomial density function evaluated at four and five. And the binomial density function is defined with k equal to five and a probability of 0 0.75. So indeed, look, purely based on the data, we can estimate an expectation. Now, this example is made up. I knew what the true probability is, but I had to use a made up example so I could show you that the world of statistics, which only ever has data, knows how to estimate these, these expectations. That's what statistics is doing with data. It is using data to estimate expectations. The expectations are known to exist, but in the real world, we don't know these true numbers. We only have the data. So in the real world, we have to trust that this convergence where the mean on just the data is converging to an expectation, we have to trust that that relationship holds. What I'm trying to do here by generating some fake data is show you how this convergence holds. This is the goal of statistics. Use data to estimate expectations that we know exist, but we don't know what they're equal to. So instead, we make excellent guesses about what they're equal to using only data. This was part one of a uh, hopefully continuing series called Show Me the Data. And we will see this relationship where we can use data to estimate expectations time and time again as we go through the semester.